climbing that fast anymore. So let's kick it off. Welcome everybody to today's webinar for mastering AI-driven document processing with Make. It's your gated way to enhance automation. And I'm super glad to welcome Lucien, Jeremy, Andrew, and Christoph. And yeah, please to the next slide. So going over our agenda of table of contents, of course, we want for everybody who does not yet know the cornerstones of Make, give you some small introduction and then handing over to Lucien regarding the evolution of AI and no-code automation. I'm really, really hyped to see that presentation today and then following it by empowering your Make scenarios with AI modules. That's just, just mind-blowing. Stay tuned there. And the automations for your business in part four followed by number five, and there's no one better than our customers showing this. And then, as I mentioned in the beginning, we're gonna jump over to the Q&A session. So feel free to already ask all of your questions, type them into your chat. We will answer them and pick them up at the end of this webinar. So make in a nutshell, I'm Sebastian, I'm head of strategic projects and welcome to today's webinar of Make. You can go to the next slide. So make in a nutshell, we're having around 100,000 active organizations and we are operating with these organizations in around 180, 180 countries and we're having around 1,500 connectors and this number is just rising by the day. One of our key customers, some logos you might know, but there are way, way more customers, of course, under these 100,000. So when going forward, you can see that we rank pretty high on our reviews because of our amazing user experience and our AI integratability. And are we reliable? We are backed by one of the most successful European startups. We're backed by Solanas. It's a Decacorn 13 billion valuation, and we are happy to be part of that. Going forward now with the next slide, I want to hand over to Lucien, but before I'm so glad that he joined today's session as he's coming from one of our closest partners, Allegria, and he can definitely walk you through the history of AI and no code. Stage is yours, Lucien. Yeah, thanks, Sebastian. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, thanks for the opportunity, Sebastian, to do this uh, introduction before we deep dive into the technical uh, stuff. So I'm the innovation director at uh, Allegria, and yeah, yeah, you can go on the next slide. And just for, for, for to explain really briefly what we what we do, um, we're actually a, a no-code focused company and in that vertical, we do a bit of everything. So we train uh, people, we have different B2C and B2B uh, programs in the no-code automation and AI uh, space. We staff, meaning that we uh, identify and, um, and uh, yeah, find resources for companies. So we find the best makers and we uh, introduce them to companies who want to build internal uh, you know, skills. And obviously we're also uh, an agency. We do also do ser uh, professional services and we deliver, we build apps ourselves. Uh, so we do a bit of everything, like uh, I said, and that gives us a, an interesting perspective, I would say, uh, on, uh, on, the, on the topic of today. Uh, so uh, happy to jump into, into this now, if you can, yeah. Uh, we've been, uh, of course, a long-term partner with uh, many local publishers, including uh, Make uh, and Aiden AI uh, over, the, over the years, so attending the different uh, partner you know, events uh, together. Uh, and so we, we, we've played with, uh, if I can say played with, it's, it's uh, what we do. Uh, we, we've both tools for, for a while now, uh, and especially in the, in the use case of today. Um, next slide, please. And before we, uh, we, we do this introduction, I, I wanted to uh, uh, seize the opportunity to, um, uh, to invite you all to the upcoming uh, No Code Summit uh, on the 10th of 11th of October, it's an amazing event. It's the second edition this year. Last year was a, a blast, really. So if you're here today, you are interested in, in this space. So come uh, to Paris uh, and uh, meet uh, with uh, all of us. We all be all the people uh, today, uh, uh, hopefully even, uh, I don't know, Andrew, if you make the trip, it's a bit far maybe, but uh, we hope to see you all uh, in Paris. So you can use the code on your screen right now to get a discount on the ticket. Um, come and get like, 
feel the energy that is actually in the currently in the industry. Um, it, it's really amazing, and and the talks are uh, really for all technical levels. So you you'll definitely find interesting stuff for you there, 10 and 11th of October. Uh, that's it for the the, the the this part. And just to, to conclude on our profile, uh, just so you know, so we are about uh, 60 plus people in the company right now at Allegria Group, all uh, divisions uh, combined. And uh, about 70% of the people in the company are certified on make. So really uh, eat our own dog shit, like, like uh, the expression says. And uh, yeah, we, we use make for almost uh, half of our projects. So uh, this is really one of the, our main uh, tool here at Allegria. And next slide, please. And our vision on, uh, so the company is about three years old and what we've observed and our vision on, on all this movement uh, that we've seen, especially in the recent years, is that basically all the, uh, and since the beginning of programming, uh, all the evolutions have always gone towards more and more abstraction. But what used to be, uh, um, let's say, the, the, the previous level of abstraction were only four coders, right? Only people who could, who could write code. So they made their life easier. They made the out, output more, more um, you know, uh, better, faster, of course. But now we've, had you know the, the, the arrival of no code tools. Uh, of course, some no code tools are ten years in the making, but I would say 2018, 2019 was really the rise of no code tools. And uh, recently, we can almost say this year, even though it's not totally true. Uh, Eden AI today has been in the AI space for much more than, than that. Uh, but uh, yeah, we 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 seen AI as this additional level of abstraction on top of no code as a complementary uh, thing, and that these two levels are really for everyone. That's really the the basically how we we, we are seeing no code and AI together, bringing even more people to uh, programming uh, or creating solutions at large, if we will. Uh, next slide, please. And how does this, you know, translate? Of course, all these numbers are kind of makeup, but just like the order of magnitude that is interesting here, that if software before for a given project would be like greater than 100K or, or more than six months, and that still happens today, right, for the bigger projects. Uh, well, with no code in the past few years, we've been able to drastically reduce the, the cost and lead time for these projects. And with AI, what we're seeing is that it's, increasing even further this you know trend uh, to deliver a very fast very efficient very customized uh, solution uh, so this is the order of magnitude again uh, that we that we observe uh, and um, this is obviously going to have major impacts you can imagine that many um, topics or problems that weren't you know weren't uh, viable to address before now even financially is viable to address them thanks to this reduction in cost and, and lead time as well uh, next slide, please. So as a result, uh, basically, what we can assume is that we are somewhere in that in that area, you know, where the the, the yellow dot is in in the terms of like how many software are going to be created in the coming years. That's obviously for like the two reasons we just saw. One is more people having access to creating digital solution, and second is obviously the time to market for these solutions thanks to no code and AI. Uh, next slide, please. And so, of course, uh, you've started to see and you'll see more and more AI everywhere. And I wanted to uh, highlight uh, a few few ways we've identified AI is coming into, into no code uh, these days. Next slide, please. So the first uh, is uh, just like make it is teasing us with, uh, uh, because it's not public yet, it's still on the wait list. You can join the wait list here. Um, it's natural language programming. Um, but when I say this, I, I, what I mean is really like you express, you know, in, in your own language, in your natural language, uh, what you want to bring, what you want the automation to do and make build it sort of automatically, automatically uh, for you. And you can just fine tune the details uh, after, after that. So that's one way is that natural language translates into a no code automation. Uh, second example is, uh, you know, yeah, it, it's good. Yeah, you can move on. yeah. Second example is uh, here from taken from Eden AI is where uh, you you don't necessarily know how to describe what you what you want to do very precisely. So Eden AI here um, helps you to identify what might be used case you know you're you're trying to uh, to build. So it's just describing your problem or what you want to achieve 
and you have suggested features that pop up uh, right away. So again, you know, you don't even need to know where in the tool you access that feature, you will have direct access here. And next slide, please. Uh, we're seeing in other tools, we see AI coming as a native feature. So you can, you know, um, here in Airtable, you can now, if this is public data, you can now, you know, um, query the, the open AI API, but directly as a feature. Uh, so you can directly write prompts within the tool and you have the, like the, the natively, uh, you leverage natively AI within the tool. And next slide, please. And another implementation of AI you're seeing in local tools is an AI assistant. So some tools are, have quite the, the learning curve, right? Maybe it's not the case of, of make an Indian AI who are like, I would say you can get uh, your value from these tools pretty quickly, but some tools like this one here, we have it's, it's much more challenging with a, with a learning curve. And you have this AI assistant that you can, you can prompt, like it's just like a colleague but available 24 seven. And you can prompt to explain how to do this with the tool, you know? So this is really decreasing the, the, the barrier to entry to use this kind of tool. So next slide, please. As a, as a quick recap, what we were seeing AI changing in the no-code space and especially no-code automation like we've seen with the example of, of Make uh, here in an AI as well, is so AI powered uh, no-coding. So being able to just use natural language to program this is like the next step. Well, right now what we were at with no-code was visual programming and now we're doing like natural language uh, programming. Uh, second is AI powered features. So being able to leverage AI directly within no code tools, um, don't even need to, uh, and this is one, one thing that also Aiden AI makes very easy. Uh, and finally, the third uh, aspect is AI powered copilots. So you, you've heard probably the term copilot before. So we had GitHub copilot for coders, and now we have copilots for no coders as well. So all our, the three key things we observe, the three trends we observe at the moment. Uh, from product perspective and from a customer perspective, thanks. Um, at the moment, so our own, you know, observation is we're dealing mostly with the, the bigger client here, the, the, the smaller clients, the SMEs, we've already jumped into implementation mm -hmm. and of course, freelancers and, uh, and uh, entrepreneurs, they, they directly leverage AI for their day to day. The big clients, uh, they are, I would say at a different stage, they obviously move a bit slower, but they have more at stake. And uh, right now what we're asking is like, um, first is like, is it going to take away our job or our company is going to catch up very quickly you know, on us? Um, also, how, okay, this is very interesting, but where do we start and how, how can we actually use that within our organization? Is it safe and so on? So we have plenty of questions at the moment and we are more in an exploring stage and I'm happy to uh, you know, uh, develop further these topics if you have specific question and so use the uh the, the q a section of the uh, the uh of zoom to to ask questions and we can further explore this but right now just to to uh, i would say to summarize they are really exploring trying to understand whether this is a threat or an opportunity or, or or both and how they can you know what are the baby steps they can take to kind of test the waters with uh with ai uh so this is where where we are at now with the the bigger corporate clients and what I always answer, and this is, I would say, my, my final uh, take uh, before I hand back the, the, the mic to you, Sebastian, is um, this is how we describe it to, to uh, even the bigger clients as well. It's like, okay, you were you know, so, somewhat like in you know, operations or whatever your role was, marketing or sales. Uh, and with no good tools, you've already experienced that you can become a builder, right? And definitely with AI, this is going to become like, uh, uh, you're going to become like a superhuman. You're going to achieve even more than you could uh, before. Things like, and we will see like passing text and stuff that even as a no coder was quite challenging, you would have to start to write some regex and stuff that would start looking like some code. Well, AI makes this kind of stuff very, very, very easy now, or let's not exaggerate, but like easier at least. And this is what exactly we know we're going to deep dive into uh, with uh, my fellow uh, panelists here. Uh, so back to you, Sebastian. Thanks, thanks a lot, Lucien. And yeah, I can only say guys, come over to Paris in October and use the code I'll, I'll link her, I just shared with you. And if you want to dive deep, deeper into AI topics, they're there for you. You can exchange your ideas and Thanks a lot, Lucien. Now over to Jeremy. I have to say, I love Adden AI. It's just an amazing tool how you can plug in 
AI components and use everything within one place. But I think there is no one better than Jeremy who can tell us more about this today. So Jeremy, stage, stage is yours. Yeah, thanks, Sebastian. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm thrilled to be here today with you to introduce uh, what we are doing at Eden AI and uh, try to show how we can uh, help the May community to leverage automation with AI. And uh, maybe first, uh, I wanted to say that as Make users, you already know all the power of uh, no-code development and the, the no-code automation. And with the rise of AI, uh, I think it can now be taken to, to another level. You, you could already accelerate and automate processes, but now with AI, you can add, extract, and generate values uh, into your workflows. And that's where Eden AI comes in. Um, Eden AI aggregates the finest uh, off-the-shelf AI APIs, as you can see here. Um, and it provides you a wide range of AI technologies, AI capabilities um, that you can use without any AI skills. Um, I, I could say that uh, Eden AI is better than OpenAI, uh, Google, and the other. Not because we are building better uh, AI models, of course, uh, but because we centralize and we aggregate all the AI uh, providers model on a universal and single API, including uh, those from Google and OpenAI and uh, many other providers. And for, so for that, you only need uh, one account, one key uh, to use all the, the AIs that exist on the market. Uh, next slide, uh, please. Uh, um, and so we, we deeply uh, studied all the AI API market. Um, there are so many actors on the market. Um, the biggest one that you know or, already, of course, uh, I, I quoted uh, Google, OpenAI, AWS, but there are so many other specialists. And we noticed that accuracy, performance, and prices can really differ between the providers. And uh, that's why we created Eden AI, in fact to help you to optimize your cost, but also reach higher uh, accuracy by easily comparing and switching between AI models and combining the, their strengths uh, sometimes. Uh, but we will see this uh, more concretely later in the presentation. Uh, uh, next slide, please. Um, so with Eden AI uh, on Make, you will be able to uh, process all the, the documents uh, that you need, for instance, uh, we can start by presenting the, the financial document parsing. Um, you can parse invoices, receipts, uh, bank checks, uh, and you will be able to use uh, the biggest uh, provider, uh, Microsoft, Google are doing this, but also some uh, invoicing specialists such as Mindy, Verify, Clipa, or Base64, for example. And your choice of provider will, be, uh, will vary uh, depending on your data. In fact, the language, the complexity of the document, the format, uh, etc. Next uh, slide. Now we, we move to, to another uh, use case that we cover uh, with uh, our modules for HR and recruitment processes. So you will be uh, able to directly parse the resumes uh, that you get um, and find the provider that best suits your need again. Here on the on the the, the HR, this is there. There are only um, specialist providers: Afinda, Irability, iRise. Uh, maybe you don't know the names, but they are really good in in what they do in AI. And you, we could imagine that uh, you could also combine multiple providers. You can, for example, we 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 have some uh, users of AI. They take uh, the skills uh, from Afinda and they take the personal info in the document from uh, Clipa, for example. So they, they pick uh, some part of the response of multiple providers. And we can do the same for the, 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 the processes of identity verification and KYC with the ID uh, documents. So next uh, slide. So now maybe uh, many of you probably think about their use case in, in, in your head and uh, you think about more specific document that you have. And there we have something, we have more advanced scenarios for you. Uh, so there, this is not like ready to use uh, modules. You will have to uh, do some uh, more complex scenarios where you will use some text extraction feature. So you will extract the text in your document that that's called OCR. 
and then you will uh, use NLP capabilities such as keyword extraction, summarization, sentiment analysis, topic extraction, um, and also LLMs from uh, all the, the, the known providers. And so there you will be able to extract information for more in more precise, more specific documents. Uh, in the example, this is a vaccination record where you can extract the text with OCR module and then uh, maybe do some summarization to, to, to condense the pertinent information, uh, the pertinent medical information. Next, uh, next one. So there, uh, to put it briefly, Eden AI covers all the AI use cases on Make, uh, not uh, just documents. Um, there is also the text uh, that you can use, as I said, with summarization, sentiment analysis, text generation, but also the computer vision, image generation, explicit content detection that can be useful in the, in the documents also, or face recognition also. Um, there is the audio part with the speech recognition and speech generation and the translation that can also be useful after doing some OCR, you can translate the documents. And we're constantly adding new, new technologies, in fact, uh, as well as the latest best providers on Eden AI. So at the moment, we, are more than, we have more than uh, 40 models available on Make, and we try to create many templates, uh, and we will keep creating more templates in the future uh, to show how to use all those modules because some of them are uh, quite complex. And uh, that's it maybe for the next slide. Uh, in a nutshell, uh, if you can, uh, perfect. So to, to maybe sum up our vision at Eden AI, it's, it's quite simple. Uh, for us, AI should be accessible to everyone, uh, and which is why we, we try to make AI tools that are user-friendly. Um, where you can access to all the, 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 the best and latest technologies. And we're excited to, to, to bring this accessible to the no code and the make community. And that's it. Thanks for your, for your attention. Uh, and maybe before uh, ending back to Sebastian, uh, you can visit our tutorials uh, on our blog. And you can also scan this, uh, this code to have some more uh, free credits on the platform that you can use to, to test the different uh, technologies. Thanks a lot for your presentation, Jeremy. And guys, feel free really to use the, the code and try using Eden. I saw so many questions already around the software. So I think there is a lot of value you can get from it. So now going forward to our next speaker, I'm really, really glad that Andrew Forte, you might know him from YouTube, Maybe you've seen this like nearly 100,000 click video around how to use automation in uh, how to use AI in automation. But I'm more than happy that he's here today. So, Andrew, stage is yours. Thank you, Sebastian. Hey, everybody. Uh, yeah, I'm Andrew, and I'm uh, here to talk to you a little bit more on the business side of running these uh, automations and things in your business. So I like to pride myself on being uh, an entrepreneur and also being able to make myself a little bit like what Lucian said earlier, a superhuman. Uh, so obviously the only way I can do that without uh, giving away all my secrets is using things like AI and using things like make. So uh, what uh, basically, let's go to the first slide. Uh, what we're talking about today is a very, very narrow part of what AI can do, but an also a very, very, very powerful part. So we're talking about OCR and document parsing. So OCR is optical character recognition and document parsing is just the way that you could search in documents for specific uh, specific components. So you can obviously see how those can work very well together. If you take an image, like say a picture of a receipt, and then you take that image and then you turn it into text, and then you can use document parsing to pull those different parts of the, the receipt into a structured format, and then you can use that. So I don't know, I like to say that I've been ahead of the curve with AI, but you know, a while ago using these tools, maybe seven, eight years ago when I started out as actually an accountant, uh, we were using things like this, um, things to extract text from receipts, uh, for instance. But 
it wasn't very good. And uh, I would like to say now that, especially with the uh, supplementation of AI, it is actually very, very good. And it is becoming extremely useful now uh, as opposed to prior. So that was always my main hesitation with things like OCR and document parsing. It's been around for a while, but it's always been making mistakes. So now you can actually implement it as a layman without lots of extra uh, coding on top of that. I think there was ways to make it useful back in the day, but you had to always add these specific uh, expressions to each sort of document and scenarios and explanations. Now the AI can kind of does that for, for you. On top of that, previously, it was also just one or two limited uh, partners that were able to offer OCR and document parsing, let alone um, uh, things that no coders could use. It was also gate kept by uh, certain programming languages and things like that. But now there's there's uh, just through Eden AI, I mean, I think there's a handful, maybe 10 different partners, each offering different specialities uh, some that are really good with extracting keywords, some that aren't so good, uh, like Jeremy said, at maybe extracting amounts. So you would use a different provider and you can, with Eden, you can switch and you can just say, okay, for this receipt extraction or this government ID, I just want to extract the names and you'll find the best AI for that. Uh, or like Jeremy said, use multiple. So that brings me on to my third point is that it's never been easier. And it's actually, uh, you know, I don't have a, a formal coding background or anything like that, but I have managed to successfully use AI for a bunch of tools. Uh, I'll show you an example that I did uh, uh, earlier, especially in OCR and document parsing. But with these tools now, it, it actually is, it's, it's genuinely able, for, like anyone watching is able to do it uh, just with a make account and you could use Eden and you don't have to do any of the complicated setups. All right, so let's go into the next slide and have a little think about uh, some of the industry applications. This is just a very narrow list and it does not do it justice on what exactly, uh, what industries you can use uh, OCR and document parsing for. Uh, I just got here yeah, for an example, accounting. Uh, it's, it's the first thing that comes to mind is taking it like nowadays, you can actually take entire bank statements and translate that into data and feed that into QuickBooks, Zero, uh, any of these accounting softwares. Uh, that's all done with OCR and document parsing. And now you can do that yourself and not have it as a third party tool that maybe costs an arm and a leg to use per month. Uh, the government has immense potential for this tool and uh, coming from a country with a slightly slower government, uh, I'm sure some other viewers may be able to relate. Things like licenses, passports, permits, being able to uh, do those and uh, with an OCR and, and optical recognition, it basically could speed up the process, you know, it's and also increase accuracy. And it also takes out things like stigmas and biases, you know, if there's applications for visas and things like that. It just feels like this should be the way it's done. Maybe it is done in some countries already, but it just makes so much sense to have that automated. And now it's easy enough to do that. And then uh, it just the last one that came to mind was transport and logistics. It's not something that I've done yet, but personally, I get extremely uh, irritated with, uh, I am in the e-commerce space and uh, I deal a lot with international shipping and maybe anyone else who has done with, dealt with international shipping has seen things like bills of landings and manifests. They like nine, 10, 15 pages sometimes, and they're extremely complicated. So I do feel like there's a very, very, very good use case for OCR and document parsing in that industry. But I'll let your imaginations go wild and we can go to the next slide. So uh, without going over too much what uh, Jeremy said earlier, so when you're using Eden AI, you just plug it into your module, uh, you plug it into your scenario within Make, and you have these sort of preset things. Uh, it's not going to do everything out of the box. You do have to just put in some of the, the, the options, but things like ID uh, pausing, you can, uh, you can literally say, okay, I'm going to send a picture to make, and then I'm going to get Eden AI and one of the partners, maybe in this case, you can see up there, there's the little logos, AWS, uh, you could use that. And then you can say, okay, I'm going to extract some of the data. Then it extracts, and then it just brings it out in a, in a paused response, which just means you have access now to use that name extracted from that ID in the next part of your scenario. So you could have rules then, extract the name, and then you can say, okay, does this name match the name on our system? And then you can start building those tools out. Likewise, with the resume parser, uh, I've also had my fair share of CVs on my desk and uh, the ability to just parse the resumes and have the, the keywords extracted from it. 
can save time. I mean, it's maybe not uh, so useful for the smaller business, but the big guys that have tens of thousands of applications coming through, I mean, this is a no brainer at all uh, to just clear out some of the ones that are instant no's or the ones that just don't, you know, automatically don't qualify. Uh, then I've got the invoice parsing, which is great. You can pull out line items, you can pull out invoice totals, you can pull out VAT, you can pull out your taxes, your GST, whatever you want to extract, you're able to do so. And then also there's tools like uh, uh, parsing your bank checks to also run those through verifications and cross checks. So you can see these are just some of the examples. There are more, but the possibilities to use this are really quite endless. So let's jump over to the next slide and I'll show you a little bit about how I've used this. So if you're not familiar with Make, this may look a little bit confusing. If you are familiar with Make, you'll realize how actually how easy it is to use OCR and document parsing. Uh, most of this isn't, uh, you know, the, the OCR and document parsing is just the three modules. The rest is sort of more related to Telegram's compl uh, complexities. But in this case, I had a stack of documents like this and I wanted to sort through them. I didn't have the time to go through each of them myself. So what I did is I found a way to take a picture of the document uh, with just a phone app and that would go into Telegram. It would get uh, sorted. It Then Telegram it downloads that file. And then once I've got that, so at that stage, it's just a picture of the text. Then I use OCR, which in this case, this is the that's the little Eden module there, extract all the text. It literally looks in the picture and it finds the pixels that look like text and then it turns it into text. It's really quite brilliant. Uh, then I have a text of every single word on those documents. I can then summarize those texts, uh, that entire text from a document, and then I can start building a bit of context around it. Some of them are just old receipts, so they have no context. But what's coming out is generally um, when I summarize the text, it actually comes up with a really good response. It will say, this is a receipt. It is made out to Andrew Forte. The date was uh, 5th of July, and it was you know, uh, for the purchase of a computer. And then I might be, okay. Uh, and then my last step, I, I used OpenAI to just create a title and the description uh, for that document as well, so that I have a long spreadsheet and then put it all into a spreadsheet um, so I can actually quickly glance over those. So I was able to find the important documents related to big purchases or important documents related to maybe some of the company documents that I've been involved with. So as you can see, it's, it is really, really something you guys can do and it can make yourself a superhuman. So I definitely suggest giving it a try. And then we can jump over to the last slide. If you're unsure, unfamiliar, uh, myself and a couple of other YouTubers have some really good uh, tutorials uh, and we all love using Make. So you can go over and some of them I walk through like step for step. Some of them I do a more context and oversight and maybe just give you some ideas, uh, some cool things. You can see YouTube automations and all those different types of things. A lot of them using Eden, a lot of them using Make. So you guys can go learn there and uh, pick up some tips and tricks for yourselves. And hopefully that will help you guys get started becoming a superhuman. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Sebastian. Thanks a lot for this nice presentation and showing how easy it is actually to plug in Eden and all the other AI vendors in to make. But who can tell us better than our customers how to actually use our product? So I would say stage is yours, Christoph. Thanks, uh, Sebastian. Hi, everybody. So to present myself, I have worked for 15 years in the food industry. Christopher, and, uh, we hear you quite uh, bad. Maybe you could recheck your audio. Sorry to interrupt you. Can you hear me now? Is it OK? Yeah, let's give it a try. OK. Uh, I have worked for 15 years in the food industry. And I have recently moved toward no code and AI. Is it OK? Can you hear me? Or... Yeah. yeah, it's okay. It's okay, let's say. Yeah. How about the others? Okay. They give a thumb up, so let's continue. Uh, now I assist food business in their digitalization efforts with no code and automation. So what I really like with Make is that I can create a tool with any, any web app ID password for users. So the tool I have created for my client is uh, to help restaurants to compare prices between wall sellers without any web app or mobile app. So basically, uh, the restaurant sends a picture of the invoice by mail. The data is extracted with Eden AI, 
and benchmarked with Make, and then sent back to the user by email. So uh, the user can save money uh, with this. Next slide, please. So the first step is uh, when the restaurant sends the picture of the invoice of food by email, the data of the invoice is extracted using Eden AI. So what I like in uh, Eden AI is uh, I can choose between various AI provider like Microsoft, Google, uh, Amazon, and so on, Dep depending on the data I need, the price, and so on. Then the data is, is extracted by Eden AI. Uh, each uh, product of the invoice is split in a keyword in order to find the corresponding product in the catalog and to compare the price of this wholesaler to the others so I can make a benchmark for the restaurant. And with uh, next slide, please. With Make, um, as you can see, I use uh, successive um, filters in order to find the, the best matching product in my catalog. So uh, first, I, I, um, I filter with the product, then the, then the type of product, then the origin, and, and so on and so forth. So I can really find the, the matching product in my catalog in order to have a really good comparison. And then um, I create a benchmark of uh, this invoice and send back to the user uh, a really precise uh, benchmark. That's it. That's it for me. Thank you. Thanks, Crystal. So to all our speakers today, a big thank you from our make side, from my end. And saying again, guys, I'm more than happy if we're going to see each other in Paris in October. And Lucien and his team at Allegra, I think they're really, really happy to see you over there. And again, also, Jeremy, thanks a lot for showing your cases and how to build with AI and add an AI and the way Andrew connected this into his real world cases as well as Christoph with his user cases, just amazing. So now we have plenty of time left for a Q and A session. Um, we answered some of these questions already, um, but I think it's your time now as our users, as our customers to ask us whatever you want to ask us and yeah. Feel free to type in. I see there's a, a question there. Can I try click on this answer live button? And sure, uh, go ahead. does does that allow? Is it is it showing somewhere? And um, is it showing somewhere that I'm answering this question? No. Okay, I'll read out the question. It was from Chris B. Uh, why wouldn't use? Uh, why wouldn't Open AI summarize the text instead? Uh, OpenAI could summarize it, and a lot of the summarizing, I think uh, in my case specifically, there was one module where I was summarizing the text, but within Eden, you can select the different modules, uh, so you, uh, the different providers. So you could use Amazon, you could use OpenAI, you could use any of them, uh, IBM. Uh, in my case, I think I used uh, OpenAI for both for my summary, but also... Uh, then I used OpenAI's direct uh, API to do a further summarization where I could give it a bit of parameters um, as opposed to just getting a generalized summary. So I wanted maybe a summary that was more use case to pick up specific words uh, and also specific things like names and dates and amounts. So yeah, you, you're able to use any of the uh, providers as a um, uh, summarization tool, if that answers the question, hopefully. Thanks. Thanks for answering this question. So let's go, I would say top down. Jason asked at 1713, OCR would be problematic based on the various forms the data comes into our system. I think it was about a previous question he answered regarding parsing uh, and replacing parsers by different tools. Um, again, I can say, Try out Adam, try out standard vendors. There are also hundreds of applications that do PDF parsing, do PDF 
uh, extraction or PDF OCR. Um, in our app finder, in our canvas, you can find all of these apps. Just search yourself a bit through by typing in PDF or AI and give it a try. I think you can definitely answer your case here. So there was Raphael asking, um, I think this goes more to Jeremy. Um, there's a question, what are the Eden AI plan costs? Maybe Jeremy could go a bit more into detail. Sure, sure. Yeah, but basically the, 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 the first offer is uh, you don't have any license. Uh, you just need to pay for all the requests you do. So you, you put some credits on your Eden AI accounts. And each time you do request to a provider, you will pay for this request. And uh, we keep the, the, the public prices of the provider on the platform. So you will uh, not uh, pay extra charge on Eden AI because we have partnership with all the providers. So we, we earn money on their side. So uh, that's a basic the, the basic pricing. And then we have some uh, licenses that you can take uh, to have uh, better rate, rate limits. So more call per seconds and some uh, advanced features such as uh, inviting some people of your team uh, um, to share your credits and your uh, API keys, creating uh, different keys for your different customers, etc. But I think I, I can also link uh, link you the the the, the pricing page uh, if you if you need all the details on the on the response of the chat. That that would be great. That would be great. Um, and regarding this discount code, there is an Andres who said he signed up and he only got ten dollars, ten euros instead of uh, thirty. Yeah, um, yeah, that's, you... that, that's uh that's weird. I don't um, be sure that you use the, the QR code uh, because I see many subscription uh, and they they all the subscription with the the right referral code they have their uh, thirty dollars, so uh, it might work on our side. So maybe maybe, this, maybe I, we take I this offline. Also, I can also send you the link uh, of the the right link to to, to create your account if you, if you need. Yes, if you if you could resend this link into into the chat, um, that would be would be great. And then we right. can move it forward to Andres. Thanks. Okay. I would say there's a really interesting question by. Gaby de Freitz, I hope I pronounced that name correctly. Uh, can you speak to any concerns around data privacy when using these tools? And therefore, I would love to open the stage to all our experts here. What you think, maybe Lucien, Jeremy, Andrew, Christoph, what are potential concerns regarding data privacy? I think I'll jump in quickly first because I don't have too much to add on it. I'm also quite curious. But what I have found is that working with some clients, they have specifically requested me using certain AI providers, uh, and each AI provider has a different uh, policy around it. You know, Amazon might be a little bit different to OpenAI, and OpenAI might uh, be slightly different to IBM, and so on. Uh, so on those connections, there is obviously a uh, point of thing to note. Uh, likewise, with uh, however you're hosting and wherever you're hosting your data uh, and what you're storing within Make is also to be uh, communicated with the client. And then I suppose, Jeremy, on your side, maybe you want to add uh, Eden's um, approach with that uh, as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, basically, we, we at the moment, we have... Uh, so for all the providers that are integrated on the platform, um, we ask them uh, and we have all the information on... Uh, which data do they store, uh, which, which um, certification they have, and where are their servers. So um, we can just um, let you select only the provider that, that, you, that you need re regarding your, um, your comp the compliances that you, that you want to follow. And we are also working on the advanced feature uh, with an automatic switch uh, so that you can switch and it will uh, lock all the provider that uh, are not uh, GDPR or the provider who uh, only have servers in the US. So you will uh, you will be uh, totally safe on your use of Eden AI. That's, that's really nice to hear that you are Im embedding this option. I am really looking forward to that. 
Yeah, I think we're seeing all the yeah we're seeing all the providers being I mean quite aware that this is one of the central topics, and we are kind of all starting to offer options to be you know really friendly in that manner. We, even ChatGPT, they are offering now ChatGPT for enterprise. Uh, and yeah, we've seen all provider. Uh, so Microsoft, its own implementation of OpenAI, they have the one where it, it, it only, uh, I would say, operates within the context of you know your enterprise environment and doesn't you know, send any data outside. So this is obviously uh, something to consider. And I think the Andrew's point on you know making sure, like, sure, the, the the data you take for your automation, it's all compliant with all in line with your client's requirements. But then you take that data out and you process it uh, somewhere. Uh, so you also, as a maker, have the responsibility. You know, so it's not just going to be the AI provider, but what you do with that, uh, with that uh, output, uh, that that will matter as well. Okay, thanks. There's one more question in into this regard when working with AI and I think um, Lucien maybe this is a question for you to answer do you think that the code plus no code plus AI is a better approach than no code plus just AI so combining all and everything instead of just no code and AI do you see any kind of advantage there uh, well, there's always advantage to if you can use, you know, some code, you can always go further for, for sure, because with no code, there's a level of abstraction that, you know, obviously uh, limits uh, the extent of, you know, flexibility that you have. But I'm curious why you think this is a better approach. Uh, I, it would be more discussion than just a question, I guess, here. And maybe you can come to the no code summit and we can do a panel together. But uh, I don't necessarily think it's it's better or worse uh, uh, an approach. The, the the whole idea with no code is empowering people. So uh, if you can code, I mean, do it with code. Uh, if you can only no code, do it with no code. Uh, it's not necessarily better or, or worse. I'm I'm trying to think, and maybe you have something in mind when you ask this question, like what can't you do? Uh, you know, with, with, that you wouldn't be able to do with with. Uh, here may I think the, it is the same person who was asking that whether we can run code directly within Make. Um, I guess that that would remove any last barrier you would have in whatever you want to you're trying to uh, achieve here. Uh, you always have the the possibility, obviously, to to run your code somewhere and just you know uh, externally and then and, and query uh, the, the the output uh, as you wish. So you're not really you don't really have to choose. Um, you can always use code and no code. Um, so shouldn't be blocked by anything here. Okay, thanks. Yeah, as you said, I think it's also something for maybe for a panel discussion and also getting more context there. So um, there's another really interesting question towards EdenAI. Does EdenAI have any certifications for compliance with customer privacy and needing to parse documents that may be HIPAA, HIPAA or GDPR compliant. Is there anything on your roadmap, Jeremy? Um, I'm, I'm trying to, to, to re read the question again. Um, yeah, on our roadmap, as I said, what we have is the switch uh, between, um, between the, the GDPR compliant providers and those who are not. Um, so this will be available uh, soon. Uh, and we are also building for uh, enterprise uh, plan. So that's uh, more advanced businesses, some customized platform where you only have the features that you, wa you want with the provider that you want. So you are totally secured and all your team is totally secured with uh, this GDPR compliancy um, question. Um, for the moment, we do not plan, we do not plan real on-premise solution uh, because we aggregate all the cloud-based API, so that that's uh, quite complicated. But we 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 can also offer the possibility to um, host an AI on a um, private server. Uh, and on our side, uh, we are GDP, GDPR compliant, of course, because we do not store any data. We just uh, get the data encrypted and directly send it to the provider, get the, the output, and directly send it to the to the user. 
So anything, uh, nothing is uh, stored uh, in uh, Eden yet. Thanks. Thanks for that. So there's one more question, of course, I want to ask you is what you would like to see maybe on one of our next webinars we're hosting from May. If you have any kind of topics or anything, what we could do better or what you would like to see, please also post it in the Q&A and we're happy to pick it up. So now when working with make, there was one question I think is also really highlightable. How to error handle inside make when working with AI, when working with data returns you might not foresee yet. Maybe some of our experts here have an idea how to work in these kind of AI error management cases. Okay, then I think we better take that question to the community and hope there's a community user that will or can showcase us. Feel free to ask your question again, uh, Roger, on the on the uh, community and we are happy to, to take it from there. So there was one more question regarding when will make AI be available? We are really working hard toward that goal. As you can imagine, working with AI and large language models isn't that straightforward. So stay tuned, Jakob. We are investing a lot in there and we're really, really pushing hard and we really try to get it as live as soon as possible. So we have some more time left. I will just read through the questions so you can see all of them. Can you describe situations or tools that parse unstructured data and provide some summary through its titles and descriptions, creating an outline, e.g. from Mark Miller? Maybe someone of you can help Mark. Yeah, I can think of an example where uh, that we, we, we have in, a, in our, so for our um, e-learning offer, uh, we have like that one single email address that receives tons of emails because it's like a really mass market thing. And we receive technical question emails, administrative support uh, question emails, uh, commercial emails. You can imagine it's one, one address for, for everything. So we, re we receive in that respect unstructured data, right? Because it's just a plain text uh, email from a customer or a prospect or, or whatever. And to be because of the volume to be efficient, we have to route it to the right person or process directly the right uh, processes uh, afterwards. And so um, AI here helps us, you know, understand the the, the answer data, so the, the email, the intent of the person, the question, and uh, either route it directly to the right uh, the right person or store uh, you know the information from the email, like uh, whatever uh, request maybe um, they want a refund, let's say, so you can directly fit out the refund request uh, based on that and structured data and fill this out into uh, like a, a directly structured database. Um, so this is interesting, obviously, when, uh, obviously at, in the beginning we were doing it by hand, but uh, quickly it uh, overwhelmed the, the, the people uh, doing that job. So we were able to um, replace um, that with AI and uh, have the people work on something with more added value. Nice, thanks, thanks. So there is some more. Are there some APIs slash make integrations for product name matching? I would say this is something where a bit of a search, a bit of a try and error could help. Um, but going forward from this question, um, Federico is asking, he wants to like, like product, uh, restaurant products, use cases, uh, to find and match the correct given product in a list of possible products. I would say it's, it could be something regarding scenario design, databases, and, and lookups, uh, but also combining it with AI. Yeah, uh, maybe to, to add some uh, precision on that. I know that we don't have directly this uh, this feature available uh, with Alien, but um, we have some kind of feature where, where you can give some examples of the elements uh, which could be product name that you, you want to uh, extract. Uh, so you give examples of the text, give example of the, the different uh, entities that you want to extract. 
uh, and then when you you give new text, it will uh, directly extract your your products. It's called uh, custom entity recognition. I, I can also find you the 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 the, the right name of the make module uh, and and put it on on the chat. Uh, but this this can really work for this kind of use cases. Nice, thanks. That's a cool endpoint, I have to say. Okay. There's there's one more question from Jamari. Is it possible to get Make connected to payroll systems such as QuickBooks, Payroll, Gusto, ADP? I could say yes. In super short, yes, we can connect to the system because you can, even if they are not on Make, you can always use, use the HTTP request module and you can simply connect to any API. We have also... Um, uh, on-premise connector if you need to connect to on-premise system says you can do this with our enterprise license there you have an enterprise on-prem connector if you need to connect to some kind of legacy adp system um, but if it is in the cloud if it has an api you can definitely connect to that going forward gabi de freitas asks does make have regular community calls where makers can meet and discuss challenges i think this is something we can move forward internally and we're happy to pick up this question um i am not aware that we have that yet but um maybe i'm mistaken there so stay tuned gabi we will let you know um there are some more questions towards security in ed and ai jeremy i would just go and ask them as well what security and privacy offers ed and ai using other models if we want to create an ocr process are our documents safe? So as I said, uh, it will depend on the provider that you choose. Um, so we are transparent on, on the, 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 the policy of all the providers. Um, so of course, we, we, if you, we have some, some providers, they, they are really good, but they say uh, we store this part of the output or this part of uh, the input that you will give to the, to the API. So in this case, if you want your, your document totally safe, you will need to 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 choose um, providers that are uh, really uh, restrictive in terms of uh, data privacy and that store uh, nothing. Um, so that's the option you have with, with, with cloud AI, in fact. And then if you really want uh, the, the best level of safety, then you... you 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 will need to to not use the the, the cloud based uh, solution, but directly use uh, on premise solution. Something that you can uh, put into your own servers uh, uh, completely on, on premise. But that's not something covered by Adenai. Okay. I see one one last question I would say from Owen. Is it possible to send in large data sources such as CSV and get AI reports back via OpenAI code interpreter? Any best practices here from your side, guys? Personally, it is something that I've been looking at, uh, but I'm not sure what the API uh, if it's that possible yet, um, especially for accounting and analyzing large data sets, it's something I've been working on. I'll probably be doing a video on it soon. Uh, but in the meantime, uh, maybe one of the other guys can weigh in. Yeah, we, we, on our side, we launched something. It's not on make, uh, at the moment it's only on the platform. Uh, it's not really the, 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 the solution uh, that you're looking for, but it's something that can help. Uh, you can put all the data you want, uh, so you can import uh, CSV with many, many different uh, text data, many large data. Um, and so you will input it uh, uh, into an AI. It will tr be transformed uh, into embeddings, um, and then it will be put it into the databases, and you will be able to ask questions uh, and the AI from OpenAI or Coir or uh, Google uh, will answer you, but only based on the data that you imported uh, into uh, into AI, into your data set. Uh, and so that's called uh, Ask Yoda. 
uh, it's it's available on any if you if you want to try, uh, and we will try of course to to put it on on make uh, very soon. Okay, thanks a lot for that. I think there are no more questions left. If we miss anything, please let us know. Again, thanks for tuning in today in today's webinar. And a big, big thank you to also uh, Alejandro behind the scenes who arranged that webinar today from our make side. And a big thank you to all our speakers here today. And hopefully see you soon in Paris at the event. And if you want to know what we're doing next or you have any feedback, let us know, community or support is a good channel. Thanks again, guys, for today's session. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thanks. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye.